the Old Testament. That's from Joel 2. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over the best. Who knows whether he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a great offering and drink offering to the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate the fast, call the solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, eat in their sickness. Let the bridegroom leave his room, and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not their heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you drink, wine, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Thank <laughs> you. 
treated as impostors, and yet are true as unknown, and yet well known as dying, and behold, we live as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making any rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we begin this Lenten season, we may not be wearing sackcloth and ashes, but we are heeding our Lord's call to return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. We join in King David's prayer of confession and Psalm 51. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. I know my transgressions. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Purge me with kisses, and I shall be clean. Let me hear joy and gladness. Hide your face from my sin. <laughs> Create in me a clean heart, O God. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Then I will teach transgressors your way, and sinners will return to you. Beware of practicing. 
confessing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret.
and then found it full of fulfillment on the cross as we celebrate and remember it during Lent. Today, in Joel, we see this beginning as we begin with Ash Wednesday. This Ash Wednesday that begins Lent with our devout symbols of sacrifice. Our sacrifice shows our desire to honor God in this season of Lent by changing the way we think and act. This draws us closer to God who sacrificed his son for our sake and thereby changed us forever into his marvelous glory. Now, can and should you make a sacrifice during Lent? You can, but you don't have to. For those of us that choose to, though, I would urge caution. The temptation will be to use our actions to brag to the world about our moral quality, when in fact, these actions are personal sacrifices to remind us of the ultimate sacrifice of God. This evening, you may choose to sacrifice something as you have received your sticker upon your forehead representing those ashes. Maybe you'll give up meat. Maybe you'll give up chocolate. And maybe you'll give up McDonald's. <laughs> Whatever it is, remember the words of Matthew chapter 6, which says, when you fast, don't make it obvious that the hypocrites do. And try to look pale and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I assure you, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair, wash your face, and then no one will suspect that you are fasting.
is the permanent symbol of life eternal through Christ. To the people of Israel, this was the ultimate hope. To us today, this hope continues as we remember the ancient story of the cross. This pronouncement of judgment being averted for the people and for us today is not so much that we should all be saved from violence, calamity, and punishment, or even inconvenience. Because the believer knows full well that we deserve such punishment. Perhaps our pride is different. We want God to forgive us and show his majesty in Christ because in doing so, even the world who refuses to see Christ as our Savior will see his compassion and believe that he is their Savior as well. When we see the calamity that reigns after a disastrous political event or a horrible natural disaster or flood, we don't want to repair and rebuild to show the world how wonderful we are that we can take care of ourselves. Rather, we want the world to see Christians sacrificing and working together to the glory of God so that Jesus and his compassion will be known. And the world might come to faith in his gracious acts of compassion and the gentle chiseling of the Holy Spirit on their rock-hard heart. The saddest part of Lent would be that we engage in our efforts to establish a ministry that is to glorify Christ, but to those who know little of Christ, they still find little of Him in our message. How sad it would be to start another mission or start a 
We thank you for calling us to return to you.
and his peace. Amen. Would you please rise in close communion, thanksgiving, benediction, and closing prayer? Let us pray. We thank you, Almighty God, for calling us to return to you, reconciling us to the sacrifice of your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, and rewarding us with forgiveness, life, salvation, and your continual presence. Thank you for nourishing our bodies and souls with your Son's body and blood that was given and shed for us. Empower us by your Spirit to live lives of service to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you his peace. Amen.
in the seven day of quarantine. We just want to make sure everyone's as safe as possible. But we should have them back on Sunday if everything goes as planned and as we're hoping and as, of course, God allows. Uh, a special thank you goes out to Deb uh, for stepping in there. I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> she did this all the last minute of it. She crushed it. Uh, thank you so much. It was such a blessing to have the congregation. Yeah, she deserves it. That's good. Thank you. Love you. Uh, special thank you goes out to Mike Burek, uh, who found our alternative ashes this year. <laughs> he searched high and low for the safest way possible that we can still celebrate the imposition of the ashes, and he found them. I've got to tell you, I think they look pretty darn real. <laughs> pretty effective, you know? And the best part is, when I was out in the community today with my little sticker all day, I didn't have anyone walking up to me and saying, Sir, your forehead has dirt all over it. <laughs> So that was really nice too. So thank you, Mike. Uh, he had to put in a lot of extra time scouring the internet, making sure they get here on time. And there was not, no less than a couple of times I saw him on the phone, he was in full panic and we're going to make it on time. So thank you, Mike, for that. Really appreciate that, making that come together today. So we are in Lent, and your services for midweek will always be at 6:30, right here, same that time, same that China.